Hey everyone, Dennis Cortez here. I'm a designer who codes, teaches, and makes music. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over what I use on a day-to-day -day basis at my product design job. So day-to-day, -day, I am a lead product designer and I lead a team of a couple of designers. So day-to-day, -day, I wanna talk about what I use at my job and maybe that can help inform what you should be learning in terms of what you want to get in your next job or what you could be doing right now in order to benefit what you're doing at your current job and maybe improve the day-to-day -day process and see if there's any tools in this video that could be helpful for you. So let's go over them. All right, so the first tool I use, this is kind of obvious if you've been on my channel for a little bit, but the primary tool I use for design is Figma. So Figma is a web-based collaborative design tool that they have a ton of features around either design systems and product design specific things, but it's also great for just illustration, branding work, graphic design, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a really great tool overall. It's my design tool of choice. I've been using it for about five or six years now, and I've switched between both Sketch and Figma and tried out each of them as well as some of the Adobe products. And overall, I just think Figma is a lot better for product design than any of the other competitions right now. And they're expanding a lot of their features as well. So they just introduced FigJam, for example, which is a really cool tool. And they're just constantly innovating. I'm a big fan of the design team there and know a couple people on the team. So I'm a big fan of what they're doing. So if you haven't tried Figma, I would highly recommend you check it out. Like I said, I have a bunch of tutorials on my channel. So if you're looking to learn some new stuff and get into product design, be sure to check those out as well. So my second tool of choice is called Miro. Miro is a tool for a lot of brainstorming and whiteboarding and more of the rough and explorative parts of the design process. So, so Miro is great as well for working with different departments because it's a lot easier of a tool to get a hang of and you can just get up and running really quickly. There's a lot of features that support collaboration within the tool, like for example, like a timer or sticky notes and comments and things like that. So I really personally like that tool and the design team that I work with, we really enjoy it as well. So I recommend it if you haven't checked it out. On that note, as I mentioned earlier, there's also FigJam, which is very similar to Miro, but in a lot of ways, Miro is a lot more advanced of a product just because it's been around for a bit longer. So if you're looking to stick with Figma, I suggest you try out FigJam. I personally would like to switch over, but there's just a lot of features that are missing at the time. So because they're in beta with FigJam, it's understandable. But I think for now, I'm going to stick with Miro, but just another option in case you do need it. Just a quick plug and a reminder that I do have a Patreon. So if you're interested in getting these videos early, getting some extra content and behind the scenes of videos that I post or just content that I'm working on outside of YouTube, feel free to check it out at patreon.com slash shyboytm. And I also make music. So if you're into music and you're looking for some new music to have on in the background, the music I make is really good just to have on around the house or if you're working on something or studying. So feel free to check that out at cortez.us slash music. So be sure to check out my Patreon and my music. And if you need direct links, they're in the description below. The third tool that I use day to day at work is called Slab. So Slab is really good for nested documentation and kind of organizing a lot of those and organizing a lot of company wide information that needs to be accessible to different people. So for example, we use it to document all of our design system and I go in there and I document all of the, so I use Slab to document basically how we use our design system, how we use it to hand off to other designers, how we use it to hand off to developers. And we also document a lot of the feature progress and process in there. So it's very helpful for those types of use cases. And on the other hand, it's also great for other departments as well. So like our HR department, for example, will use it for onboarding for new employees. So there's a lot of basic documentation around like the culture of the company, kind of how we operate and how we work. Alternatively, I also recommend Notion. So Notion is a big tool that I use in my personal work. But the one caveat with Notion is that it's very free form which can be good at the end of the day for being helpful for power users, for example. So at scale, Notion can get pretty messy because you have to keep track of what templates are being used and making sure that the people that are making those edits are actually on top of that and keeping things consistent across the board. So that's why it's a bit hard for me to recommend Notion at times, depending on your team. And Slab has a lot more constraints to keep you all consistent within that so that you don't have to think about that stuff either. The fourth tool that I use on day-to-day -day work is called Descript. So Descript is primarily for video and podcast editing. 
And the reason that we use it is for user research. We do all of our user research through like Zoom calls or Google Meet calls, and then we record those with our user's permission, of course, and we upload those to Descript so that we can use Descript's features for transcribing all of those interviews that we do so that it's easier for us to share out to other departments, for example. We use Descript in collaboration with Slab because once we get the transcription from Descript, we can actually take those key takeaways and put them within a Slab document, again, with all of those constraints that I mentioned earlier, and then we're able to share out those key takeaways rather than having to share a whole video because you know not everybody has time to watch the whole video and only design really needs to see that. So instead, we can use that in collaboration with Slab and get people informed on the user research that we're doing still. The fifth tool that I use in my day-to-day -day work that I recommend is Google Slides. Obviously, you can kind of exchange that for something like Pitch or Keynote, for example, but we personally use Google Slides. So the reason that we do that is because it's a lot easier to make decks within something like Google Slides versus trying to fit Figma into that because it's just not made for decks. It's also hard to work with different departments collaboratively if you're just having it in Figma because obviously those people don't know how to use Figma as well as a designer would. So instead we can use Google Slides, collaborate with them, kind of get the format going. And the reason that we want to do slide decks is because for example, say you're at a smaller startup and you have to work with the CEO in order to raise a, you know, a series A or a seed fund that you're working through. So if you're at a smaller company, you're gonna to wanna to be able to do slide decks because there's usually only a couple designers on the team and not everybody can only work on product design. Typically at smaller teams, you also have to do a bit of like branding or illustration, or in this case, slide decks. I think it's a very valuable skill set to have if you're wanting to go into startups. So that's just a recommendation that I have is to be familiar with Google Slides. I'm by no means like an expert or anything, but I can do all the basic stuff and create formats for the rest of the team to use uh, for presenting to either other teams, people outside of the company, or even other designers. The sixth tool that I use in my day-to-day -day work for product design is Slack. So if you're not familiar with Slack, it's basically like an instant messaging platform for teams. And then you can have like channels and things like that so that you can organize based on projects. It's very similar to Discord, just a bit more work focused than Discord is. And we use that for calls, messaging, standard things like that. You can even set up what they call bots to have like automated one-on-ones, for example, or you can set up this thing called donuts where you can basically meet a random person in the company. Uh, so they have a lot of culture-based things in terms of bots as well. Um, and like I said, with automation and actually having apps be integrated with that as well. So for example, uh, like GitHub or Figma, if there's like different things that you wanna integrate with, there's actually ways to do that with Slack, which is cool. So I use that every single day throughout the day. The last and final tool that I use every day is Asana. So Asana is a task management tool at the end of the day, and there's a ton of them out there. For example, like Linear or Jira or some other options. The reason that I bring this up is because as a product designer, you really need to be able to think in terms of project management as well. So not only are you keeping your tasks like day to day here so that everybody's up to date on what you're doing, but it also helps with planning as well. So me as a lead product designer, I actually work with our team to do planning for all the tasks that we have upcoming for OKRs, for example, for the next quarter, or what we're working on for the next couple of weeks for that sprint. And at the end of the day, you need to be familiar with Asana, all the features that it has. There's a lot of cool features that you can use once you get it going to automate a lot of the, you know, like tagging and separating things into different columns. But it's really cool. You can have like different progress charts and things like that. So Asana is a very complex tool, definitely more focused on project management. But as a product designer, again, you should be familiar with it. So those are the main tools that I use for product design on a day-to-day -day basis. It's really not too many. There's a couple outliers that come in every now and then, but these are the standard ones that I'm using almost every single day. So I hope this was helpful for you in case you're trying to get into product design or trying to work on your current process and maybe improve some of the tools and maybe improve some of the skill sets that you have with each of those tools. So I hope this video was helpful. Remember to subscribe because on my analytics, I can see a lot of people are watching the videos but not actually subscribing. So if you can, I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel grow and get some of these videos out to more people so that we can all learn a bit more about design and kind of what that comes with. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to leave a like and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.